Hi everyone, welcome to Mtunuwatu. This is a bi-weekly production where we discuss social justice, religion, humanity and culture. Mtunuwatu is a Swahili proverb that means a person is people. The proverb was used in Africa to remind people the importance of Timor. Because individually we're weak, but together we're strong. Welcome. How do you say hello in Swahili? Is it jambo, habari, or what? Jambo. It's sasa. I don't think it's sasa. Poor. I'm sorry to all the Kenyans out there. Jambo. <laughs> Somebody used to come to me in school. Like, I was in school and I had a lot of Kenyan friends. And they would be like, sasa. And I was like, sasa nini? Yeah, sasa, poor. <laughs> sasa is poor. <laughs> niaje poor. Yeah, for feet. Yeah, I feet. think you just say niaje. Or jumbo. Jumbo. Mm. That's very old school. About like a jumbo. Me? Just like you're talking to to like a foreigner. <laughs> like you're teaching him how to say hi. Like that's you say jumbo, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, like or shikamo. Jumbo, that's a more proper way of saying yeah, it. Shikamo, oh, yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> 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 it's, it's communication, so, right? Yep. Communication. So we want to talk about communication uh, today. And we want to like dig into this and see what is communication and and all those little details about it because communication is vital for our survival for everyday living. I was going to say survival. Mm-hmm. If you're a poor communicate communicator, life gets really rough, <laughs> right? <laughs> With people and you know at work, you have to communicate everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter where you are. You have to communicate. So what is communication? If somebody finds some good answer. I found a few. A good explanation what it is. Um, Exchanging of information was one. And the successful conveying or sharing of ideas and feelings. But I also believe there should be a listening piece. Ideas and feelings. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, I, I found means of sending or receiving information. Mm. Yeah. That was interesting, the ideas and feelings. So we, we communicate feelings mm-hmm. and ideas. Huh? <clears throat> what do you get, Maria? Kind of the same thing. Same thing. Um, yeah. Um, one of them was like the act of giving, um, receiving or sharing information. In other words, talking or writing and listening and reading. Mm. Mm. So that's yeah, a little more broad. Yeah. Okay. I, I said communication. This is the act of giving, receiving, and sharing information. Mm. And I also say found that uh, it it involves words, talking or writing, and listening or reading. So similar to what Maria found. Yeah. yeah. And a good communicator will listen carefully, speak and write clearly, and respect the different different opinions. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's also yeah. nonverbal and verbal. Yeah. Yeah. I think that nonverbal is key. Very too. important. Ninety percent. Nine. Is it ninety some? Or some Probably. percent? It's the biggest high. percentage of yeah. <laughs> ways of communication. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I also say it's trying to process a lot of information in your head and verbally or audibly passing it through to others. Mm-hmm. And uh, transmission and transfer of information. Transmitting and transferring of information. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I think it is. Yeah. So is communication learned, a uh, skill, or we are born with it? Is it a skill that we learn, or we um, naturally just have it? Like it's just natural. I feel like um, communication is like a life long learning process that we develop since we were born. But then as we grow up, we have to like establish effective communication mm-hmm. and that's something that you learn throughout your whole life oh, okay mm-hmm. yeah yeah so you're born with it mm-hmm. and then but you have to well, to effectively communicate mm-hmm. that's you, you, you learn that yeah mm-hmm. okay okay if you think about babies like they try to communicate and mm-hmm. no matter 
And, and but then they learn from feedback, right? So you have yeah. the kids who like nobody responds to their cry, they stop crying. Mm-hmm. You know, so they learn different ways to communicate. That's right. Yeah. So so communication is a is a skill that we learn we and prove and prove upon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We were born. Right. With we were born. It, with we it. have to learn. And how and how just keep on improving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. What did you get? The same. Yeah. But is it true that some people are better communicators than yeah. others? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Why is that? If we all have it. <laughs> I feel like either they choose to not communicate. Yeah. Maybe, maybe there are some people that choose to not communicate because they don't feel like they're ever heard. So you just shut down. Yeah. Or you choose not to communicate because you think that everybody already knows what you're thinking, regardless. So mm-hmm. It should be common sense, but no, people don't know that. Exactly. <laughs> That's what you I don't read your mind. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then you got the other side that people who over communicate. No, oh, my yeah. goodness, yeah. Uh, it's like the yeah, same point for like 20 crazy. minutes, and you're like, to sum up. <laughs> you know? you just keep going and going and going. You just talk too much. <laughs> There's people that can talk and they're like, "What did you say?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's their point? <laughs> There's like, what was the point here? Like, I, I didn't get it. What did you say? Like, yeah. you know. But if you if you came from like a background where communication was lacking, so like a a, a family um, environment to where like communication was lacking and no one was communicating very well or effectively, so. Growing up, it could be really hard to, you know, how, how to communicate with people. It yeah. could be very hard. So mm-hmm. you really have to, like, know that and actually try to find a way to, to communicate effectively to other people. Because, I mean, you just don't want to have that effective communication. Mm-hmm. It just does not help. Yeah, That's very true because the kids that I work with have no communication skills at all. Mm-hmm. Like, they think to communic- commu- to be able to people to hear them, they have to, like, be, be in rage. Yeah, or do something mm. really or crazy. Or do something really crazy. Mm. Or just do start cursing, you know, or scream. That they think that's how people will hear them mm. or communicate that way. So so I think even though <clears throat> it's something we're born with, like like Maria was saying, like, it depends also with your background or like your family because mm-hmm. that can affect how you communicate with people, how you express yourself. Mm-hmm. Like it's like I'm saying, like this kids sometimes don't understand how to act. Mm-hmm. They think if I need something, they just have to like shout at somebody. Hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it, it, yeah. No, continue. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just saying because yeah. it's, it's learned because you know what's modeled for you, you end up exhibiting. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't been a part of like a healthy communication style, you won't have the skills yeah. yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you got to build on them. That's true. So you have to learn how huh? and work upon it. What were we gonna say? Hey, like we loved. <laughs> no, I was saying. Um, I think you said something earlier, and how like, um, oh yeah, being, being like feeling as if you're being heard. Mm-hmm. That's another thing. Um, like Uncle, you were saying how like those, a lot of those kids that you that you see like they feel like they need to do something crazy yeah. just mm-hmm. to be heard. Like, and imagine you have to do something like outrageous as that just to feel like you're being heard. Mm-hmm. So coming from a background where you you know your ideas or like your voice is not being heard a lot, and then growing up and like you feel like the only thing that you can do is like doing some crazy stuff, then that way people are paying attention to you and they're actually listening to you. Mm-hmm. I mean that's just kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. That's but, just but do you think that's actually if, uh, effective communication when you act like that? No, it's not effective. Not for like the larger population. It might be like how your family unit or the people closest to you communicate with each other, but it's not going to help you. No, in larger society. Yeah, yeah, because not everybody's going to handle your rage. Mm. It's because you want this now. You have to like act out. (laughs) (laughs) And it doesn't necessarily have to be rage. You know, have you met like one of those people who feel like like. They la- just be- because they're lacking communication that they're not able to talk to people effectively, right? So then they're so used to doing everything by themselves without mm-hmm. asking for help. So it doesn't necessarily yeah. mean like doing crazy things, but it could be like you're you you have made it to a point where you feel like you can only rely on yourself and only yourself. Mm-hmm. So now like you don't ask yourself. for help. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe too, like you've developed one piece of communication, like maybe written. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think about like when. 
<clears throat> we were dating long distance for four years. We didn't, like the first couple years, we didn't have a lot of phone time. <laughs> so it was a lot of emails and emails took 24 hours away back in the day, right? Like, <laughs> email was snail mail. But, for it, y'all. Yeah. Wow. But uh, we got really good at written communication. So when we got together. Verbal communication. In person, verbal was like harder wow. because... With the written, we had time to process right. and yeah. really kind of sit with it yeah. before we responded. And verbal was a new skill for us, yeah. you know, to figure out how the two of us could communicate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think if you're really good at one area of communication and not at another, you kind of have to challenge yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To, to learn the other skills too. Yeah. Yeah. So so it's something that you, you can improve on, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. I don't keep, keep growing in it, you know. So, uh, so how do you com- uh, communicate? In y- how do you guys communicate in your family? We don't. <laughs> <laughs> when I first read this, I thought it said, "Do you communicate in your family?" And oh. I was just like, "How do you yes, effective, communicate maybe not in always, your family. <laughs> exactly." <laughs> but how do you? Well, every, like, like we're just saying right now. So every family has their own way, uh, own mm-hmm. ways of communicating, right? Mm-hmm. Some people is screaming at each other. I feel like I told you to do that and didn't do it. <laughs> How can you forget? I think you. I guess you just didn't want to do that anyway in the beginning, <laughs> right? I mean, coming from a traditional family, I feel like for the older people, it's more verbal, and for the younger people, it's nonverbal. Yeah, yeah. In your family, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the younger's <coughs> younger don't have really that voice, yeah, allowance exactly. So weird. Like yeah. your voice is like shut. It's not what? shut. It's just <laughs> mm-hmm. it's not accepted. It's not heard. You, yeah. It's That's not, not heard. your voice is not heard. So why try? Mm-hmm. I, yeah. That's hard. Yeah. How how do you communicate in your family? I don't know. How do we communicate? <laughs> 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 okay. No, I think in the beginning, though, um, I used to raise my voice, and you used to shut down. Um, and I've learned how to take my voice down a level, and you've learned how to speak instead of shut down. Yeah. So just kind of mm-hmm. grown in our own family about yeah. that. Um, yeah. Don't know if it's always effective, but. Yeah, for me, I would shut down because I don't want to say something stupid because mm-hmm. it's so easy for me to say that. <laughs> and then I would spiral because I'd be like, well, he's not talking to me, so now I'm mad because yeah. he's not talking to me. Mm-hmm. So by the time yeah. he'd come around to talking to me, I was mad again. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Well. Yeah. Wasn't effective at that. No, <laughs> not at all. It did not help us back yeah. then. <laughs> yeah, so, so, but do you think it's important for your voice to be heard? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because that's how you allow, like, that's how you, f- you feel more open to let other people in. Mm-hmm. And then that's how you better communicate with other people so that you you can be able to tell other people things and other people can be able to tell you things yeah but so you think that if just because you said in your family adults are supposed to, to be the ones speaking and younger people are supposed to just be quiet is, is that a is do you think it's there's room to, for improvement so you can because that's not healthy communication when one person is the one talking 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 and I'm, you can't talk I mean, there is room for improvement, but if the older generation is the way they are, where they're just like mostly verbal, it's something that they've learned from their parents and so on and so forth. It's been taught from generation to generation. Yeah. What we can do as the younger generation is making sure that that doesn't repeat in our own families yeah. going forward. That's the improvement in itself. But I feel like trying to improve our own families right now, I feel like it's not something that's going to happen and that's okay because you really cannot change something that has been developed for such a long time. And if they're choosing to stay in that in that concept, okay. But I, for myself, I know that I'm going to build something different with my own family going forward. Yeah. That's the improvement. Yeah. You can't change the past. Yeah. But this is not just the past, though. It's like present. Yeah. 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 But the other piece of communication is being able to listen um, for trying to understand instead of listening to respond. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think when the when you're from a background where people talk, 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 and you're mm-hmm. expected to be silent, you do get, you can choose 
to make that a listening skill. Yes. Yeah. So you learn how to really listen beyond the words, mm-hmm. right? There's a lot more going on. Mm-hmm. And so then when you start your own family and you want to break some of that, you're really good at listening. So then you learn how to speak and then also listen. Exactly. Yeah. And then you pass mm-hmm. that yeah. on, right? So yeah. you've already yeah. developed the skill of listening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Or you can choose. To <laughs> <laughs> so you can just shut down and be like, whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> True. For me, I, I don't like to be... I don't like the non-verbal communication stuff. Mm. Like just just say what you feel. I don't read your. I can't read your mind. Like when it and it, it just it makes me exhaust. It, it exhausts me mm. when somebody or even at work and somebody wants to say something but they can't tell you. They can't tell you but they're acting out something. Mm. Oh, it drives me crazy. Like slam yeah. doors. Yeah. Stomping around. <laughs> I, I don't. Like, I don't like that stuff. Like. Just, just say what's going on. Stop. <laughs> I don't. I can't read your mind. You know, but like you guys were saying in the beginning, that the problem is like ninety percent of that's that's what we, how Isn't we communicate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Isn't that exhausting? <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but it, it, no, because I feel like it, it happens so subconsciously. Like, mm-hmm. you know, when you hear, like, I know when I hear something really like it's just stupid, I will roll my eyes, like subconsciously. Yeah, but I, I like I didn't even realize that I did it, <laughs> but uh, because I'm so used to it, I'm just like you know, whatever. And then, yeah, it's very a lot of nonverbal. Yeah, yeah. I prefer just speaking out what what I'm thinking and feeling, just like it is, instead of like pretending. And he should see it; they should know how I feel. Either way, that's exhausting to me. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes there's a delay in my communication and my feelings because I'm not exactly sure what I'm feeling. Yeah. Like there's a lot of emotion going on and then I'm like, but yeah. what is it? <laughs> you know? Mm. Communicate it. Say it. Yeah, but I don't know yeah. it yet. We don't know what it is. <laughs> what we're going to talk about. Yeah. yeah. Nothing. I don't know. I don't know why I'm feeling like that. How do you guys deal with non-verbal stuff? non From somebody else? Yeah. Mm. I just... They just show an attitude and like... What is wrong? Oh, with yeah. yeah. If it's <clears throat> attitude, I leave it alone. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah. So I just, it is what it is. I feel like being nonverbal for so long, I just, when a situation like that, if somebody's giving me an attitude or like everything starts to spiral, I take myself out of the equation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just walk away. Because it's better to like not say anything than saying something out of the spur of the moment, out mm-hmm. of anger, mm-hmm. and then you end up regretting it later. Yeah. So that's why I always just take myself out of the situation and calm down. Yeah. How about the so silent stuff? The silent treatment? The silent, silent treatment. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the silent like you don't, treatment. You don't exist. To, <laughs> mm, what, are they to trying to, what, that, what are they trying to communicate? That they don't want that to That they're angry. To. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I don't want to <laughs> talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> they're right and you were wrong yeah <laughs> so the only way we can start talking again is if you come and apologize for but you don't you know do. so how do you how do you, you like pick up all those information from that silent treatment I've learned you gotta oh, you just you just keep, keep from imagining listening. in your head <laughs> you gotta, before silent treatment happens something loud happened mm-hmm. and then silent treat, treatment yeah. was like yeah. an effect of that yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so you're able to decode what she's trying to say you can't you can't decode it. You, you can, can decode try. everything, but you can kind of get the gist as to why. Mm. Just know you need yeah. to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> and then they say, for what? When you apologize, and you're like, uh, for being bad. <laughs> exactly. And then we don't But you don't know why you're apologizing. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't apologize anymore. I really don't. Especially if, if I know that I wasn't in the wrong and I know I didn't do anything wrong and that person is choosing to be upset over whatever matter that they found out or whatever, I know I'm not in the wrong. And I always pray about it. I always pray about it because, like, you know, Jesus knows all seeing, all things and he sees all things. So, like, if I know I'm not in the wrong and I know I didn't do anything, I'm not going to apologize for something that I did not do. Mm-hmm. So if that person is choosing to be angry over something that was very tedious or something that was just so small but that person is choosing to be mad about it and thinking that i did something wrong oh that's on them then that's on yeah. them. i really don't you apologize if you apologize for, for something that you did you know you didn't do are you co- are you are you accepting that you did that, that you did that thing? no 
See, mm. I can't yeah. do that. That's why. You know. Why would I accept something I didn't do? So you're gonna also do the nonverbal communication to to show to to prove that you're. I right don't now. like yeah. doing the nonverbal <laughs> communication, like silent treatment or things like that. Like I don't like that. I see that as very pointless. But like, if the other person is gonna act like that, how am I gonna talk to a wall? You know, so why am I talking and then you're not you're not talking? You know? Eventually yeah. they do. I've noticed that eventually they do because you you don't just become nonverbal. I mean, if they choose to be, you know, they they give you the silent treatment. I'm still gonna, you know, kill them with kindness. So I will say hi to them, you know, every day, um, whether I'm coming or going. And when they choose to talk to me again, I am here. But I'm not gonna force it. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely not gonna force it. Because maybe you need your own time. To yeah. Process whatever. Yeah. Whatever it is <laughs> that you don't want to process together. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, <laughs> <laughs> we went into a whole rant. But overall, a communication is important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, what does a perfect communication look like or involve? But we all know that this non-verbal mm-hmm. and stuff is not, even though that's a majority of our communication, mm-hmm. it's, it's, not a, it's not a good skill. No. I mean, yeah. I don't think it's a skill per se. I think it's just something we do. You know? How Every, you react everything we do is a skill, I think. How you react to, um, to like news, you know, how you react to somebody doing something. You're going to do something, and it's going to show how you're feeling. It's a way that we express ourselves. It's a skill that you develop, right? I don't think it's a skill that you develop. I, I'm sure that you start to, you can make it so that it's more nonchalant, or you can make it so that, I mean, it's more expressive. But I feel like it's just the way that you express yourself. You know, there's you really can't learn or unlearn how to. I mean, you can unlearn how to do like eye rolls and things like that. <laughs> but I feel like you, it's not a skill that you just like. It's not something that you learn. Like, okay. To pick up, I, I don't know. It's not a skill per se. That's what I'm saying. So what is it? Like you just like. It's the way habit? we communicate. <clears throat> it's the way we express ourselves. But you can mm. learn how how to express yourself better. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can learn how to do it better. But it's it's something that's in us. It's how we express ourselves. Yeah. So so what is a better one? What is the be- what like? I mean, how should we communicate better? I saw this thing. It says like always. Um, so c- good communication or perfect communication. Always, it's always about understanding the other person and not about winning an argument or forcing your opinion. On others, mm-hmm. yeah, and mm-hmm. that kind of that makes sense because sometimes when like like a miscommunication happens, you always feel like you're you're in the right in the situation, but not try, but you don't really understand like what led to that miscommunication. Maybe there's something on their part, you know, that you probably didn't you know understand well. So that makes that kind of made sense to me a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think um, perfect communication involves. Um, time and space like you have to have that kind of ability to maybe even react like you always react Mm -hmm. but then be able to dial it back and be like whoa sorry you know um this is what i really feel about the situation you know those kind of things and so you know the girls will be like so mom what if i came home and told you this be like well i would probably have a reaction and then we would talk about it Like, like having space for the reaction because um, you know, while we're growing and learning, there will be a reaction. And I'll learn how to tame that down a little bit <laughs> in mm. that communication. But I also, you know, I think that listening piece is so important of just allowing that space to process like what you just said mm-hmm. so that I don't have to respond right away. Like there yeah. can be a moment of like, okay, let me think through this before yeah. I respond. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <clears throat> but some things are in the moment. Yeah. Like, you know, you don't have that time to, like, process things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's still the, at the same time, you have to be able to listen and process it at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for me, I like to write things. Like, when, when if somebody's telling me stuff that I, I feel like it's too much, I start writing, like, notes. 
and then well then my note and then when I'm about to respond I can go through my notes and respond correctly mm-hmm. not just like start making up things that they didn't say <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know yeah but like when you interpret I bet I mean you, yeah. you take notes I do that and I'm, I pieces. do that even just notes when I'm talking to people like I'm used to it mm-hmm. so <clears throat> I just want to make sure that I I, ca- I touch every area that they talked about, mm-hmm. and so they can say, "I didn't say that." Oh, I didn't. I didn't say no. You you said this and this, and yeah, I responded I to it. it you mm-hmm. know, so I wrote it down. Yeah. So, so I feel like sometimes, I, I guess like those kind of writing notes is just a skill that you learn mm-hmm. to be able to communicate better mm-hmm. and be able to express what you feel better and respond to people precisely. Without of you know offending them or adding your own word, putting words in their mouth, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Because mm-hmm. in the moment it's very easy to just like assume somebody said this and you you totally change it. I think this is what you meant, but that's not what they meant. Mm-hmm. I didn't say that. This is what I said, you know. Or you say something and they give you this look yeah. while you're talking, and so you start completely internalizing like what they already are thinking. Yeah. Like connecting those dots that aren't there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those nonverbal communication. Yeah. <clears throat> you know? Yeah. And it's very easy to, to just like twist somebody's words and just oh. believe some, oh, I know why they said that. Mm-hmm. You know? This is what you really meant. Yeah. Even though you didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. This is what they were trying to tell me when they were acting this way. Mm. You know, you decode everything. Like you can read their mind. <laughs> this is what they were thinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Mm. We do that a lot, though, as, as people. Yeah. We, we think we know what somebody else is thinking. Mm-hmm. And we can, we can actually, like, say it. Which, and that's not true. That's not really being a good communicator. Right? Mm-hmm. So what is, what, is, uh, <clears throat> what is stopping us from being good communicators? Or what is stopping you from being a good communicator? I feel like outside outside my family, like nothing is stopping me from being a good communicator because I know how to. I'm starting to learn how to like, <clears throat> excuse me, how to communicate with people a lot better. So outside of my family, nothing is really stopping me from being a good communicator. But um, inside my family, like I said, um, it's something that has developed. Like it's tradition. It's been there for a long time. So there's no way of changing it. So the way it's been is that it's. The, it's just the way it's going to be but i know that i know that i can affect i can, I can effectively communicate with other people outside my family yeah. and that's just yeah that's just that for me honestly mm. yeah what do you think um yeah i think that's basically it really cuz me outside of outside of the family i'm a, i'm pretty good sit people down oh, what's up this is what's happening yeah, but and communicate. Yeah. I think yeah. I'm pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I'm pretty good. <laughs> I think I'm decent. I'm still learning to better communicate effectively and allow my voice to be heard in certain mm-hmm. situations and certain things, like work or um, being more assertive or. Um, listening to understand more so there are some skills that i can perfect but i think i'm doing okay yeah i think that um i get too much in my own head so i will say no before they say no so then i won't even ask because i'll be convinced that they're going to say no Mm. or um sometimes i'm almost listening too much to the point where like I had a boss, um, and um, he'd be like, "So, what do you think about this?" And I'd be like, "Well, so and so is thinking this, and so and so is thinking this, and you know, this was communicated over here." And then he'd be like, "Okay, now that I know how the entire company feels about this, how do you feel about this?" <laughs> you know, I'd be like, yeah. "Oh, well, hold on a sec, then. Um, let me think," because <laughs> I could just get too much in my head and forget. Mm. Like you're thinking way ahead. Yeah, either thinking too much ahead or I'm <clears throat> filling in the dots that don't need to be filled in. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it's, I guess, a lot of people say that, uh, like, I'm very direct. 
Yeah. <laughs> Just a bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Straight I mean, to the point. I mean, <laughs> they're kind of right. But I don't think that's a really bad thing as far as communication. Because for me, I feel like I, I need to be truthful. Like, mm. I don't like to beat about the bush. I mean, you see it as effective communication, but it doesn't mean somebody will see it the same. Yes, because, some, you know, they don't... They, 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 some yeah, people, they don't yeah, some people maybe want to... Um, you need to be a, a bit softer in I, your, your like directness. Not, not like in a rough, but people don't like truth. Your truth. Your yeah. truth. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just saying the truth. Your truth. <laughs> that's, that's, your that's your truth. truth. <laughs> that's <laughs> not theirs. You know? They may be thinking something completely different, which yeah. is mm-hmm. their right and their truth. And then so you, you know, be yeah. softer about directing your truth <laughs> to them. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. I think I've learned to ask questions instead of assume. So it's like, yeah. okay, you just said this to me. Did you mean me to listen? Like, did you mean for me to hear it this way? And he'd be like, I didn't say that. And I was like, okay, I'm just checking. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, that's, that's what the, I heard. You're trying to feel. <laughs> exactly. The so that's why I, I ask. Yeah, yeah. So, we, you know, it doesn't just get buried. And then mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, that one time you said this. Yeah. <laughs> when that you makes didn't say sense. That. Yeah. <laughs> I really appreciate um, sitting down. In having a conversation with someone mm-hmm. and like not speaking over each other, but actually taking yeah. turns to actually listen <clears throat> and for them to kind of be open and explain exactly what they mean. So that I'm not assuming anything. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. That's, that's, that's good communication. I could mm-hmm. try to resolve problems and things that are going on. Yeah. Yeah. So. But by communicating about it, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I've, I'd, I've never had any issues about talking to somebody about what's up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just communicate, talk about it. Mm-hmm. Now, text message is a whole different. Yeah, I don't like yeah, that. I don't like it. <laughs> that was, if that it's was, important, yeah. don't do we that. We suck yeah. at text yeah. messaging. Well, written communication, because then you put voice to it. Mm-hmm. I can write stories. Oh, you, you put like all these caps, oh. thinking that so they all understand. That's that you're stressing that or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, why are you yelling at me? Yeah. I'm writing in capital letters, so that's I'm, I'm yelling now. No, people could be ha ha ha, but they're not laughing in person. <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah. I like phone conversations, or we meet up in person. Yeah, because texting. Plus, I forget. Yeah, to text. I forget to text. Yeah, I read it, and I'm in the middle of something, and then yeah, I'm well, not fast enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just so time. difficult to express emotions on written things, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. 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 And so people would not understand, like, did they mean this? Did they mean it? Mm-hmm. Or they were just writing it for the sake of it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then there's some people that don't like being sitting down and talking. True. Yeah. They think it's, it's like a, an attack or something. Yeah. Right? Even though they do it to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They think you just attack them. You yeah. know? Oh, gosh. We need to take the combat zone out of communication. Yeah. Yeah. That's important. Mm. So so communication is important, right? <coughs> uh, in our everyday life. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't get away from it. Mm-hmm. In your home, at your work, every day, you have to be good at it. Yeah, because even your non-communication is communicating something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and people, exactly. might, people might assume... Assume the opposite. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it must be just quiet and people are like, why is Maria so quiet today? I'll try you. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, is, <laughs> what is she trying to say? Mm-hmm. And somebody might assume some else. Some I else. know, when she's just. Maybe, maybe she doesn't like me here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> and that's what we do, that's what Jesus is your things, you know? Mm hmm. Oh, she's mad that I just joined the choir or something. Yeah. Right? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Why? That's why she's so quiet. <clears throat> why is it so easy to just assume? <laughs> to like make up this, right? Yeah, And then we take it as truth, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, we thought it, so therefore it's true. Yeah. <laughs> it must be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I decoded it. <laughs> they they thought they were hiding it from me, but I yeah, I think it did that. Really what so they said. Bad. And all they said was I. You said yeah. wow. They're being so aggressive today. Yeah. Gosh. 
So what 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 kind of communication do you prefer of all those non-verbals, you know, verbal, written, all that? Open communication. You prefer that? Open, yeah. very open, very verbal. Yeah. Yeah. You don't like letters? No, I don't like because I won't tell what it is that you're saying in text messages. I don't I don't know what you're saying. Yeah. You know. You can be very sarcastic, but it comes out like direct for me. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So. But that's what we do now. <coughs> Even people in relationship is just texting, texting, texting. That was me for a while, for yeah. a little bit. <coughs> it was like that for for a while. But um, I think we're a little bit, a, a lot better at it now. Yeah. Because we realize like it's really important to just kind of sit down and talk about it, like face to face. Because yeah. then, even over the phone, you really can't tell what the person is feeling. Because they will try to manipulate the situation and make you feel like they're okay, but they're not really okay. Yeah, more. you can't see that now. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I've I've found I found like a piece in like actually talking face to face. That way, I can see his reaction. He can see my reaction, and actually know that I'm not okay with this and that, or if I'm okay with this and that. Mm-hmm. So open communication, that face to face communication, is really important to me now. Mm-hmm. So so really. Uh, <clears throat> these non-verbals are so important in our communication anyway, yeah. even though they suck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they suck. But they're there. But yeah. <laughs> when you're talking to somebody, the non-verbals help you understand what they're trying to say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, you see their facial expressions, if they're lying. Yeah. Yep. You ever talk to people that don't look at you when they're talking and t- mm-hmm. they're just like looking all over the place or like, mm-hmm. what, what, is, what is going on here, you know? But you're like, are you distracted? Some people what? don't like making eye contact. Yeah, I don't. I like know for a long time contact. I hated making eye yeah. contact. Mm-hmm. But really how does somebody know that you're actually like there? Like I'm there. <laughs> I'm listening. I may be looking elsewhere, but I'm listening. Mm-hmm. I'm taking in in my own way. Like staring at you straight ahead is just gonna make me uncomfortable with this whole situation. So, mm-hmm. but but somebody might read it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I learned. And when I started doing interviews for jobs and things like that, then I learned that you have to look you, at people. You got to look at people. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know why they feel like it's better if they look at you in the eye. It's a cultural is it, thing. Is it a culture thing? Mm-hmm. I just want to make sure. Yeah, because there's some cultures where look, like looking somebody in the it's eye just, is actually disrespectful. Disrespect. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's so. what we came at. Mm-hmm. It was kind of hard to build that um, growing up because. We've learned it for so long. You can't look at an elder in the eye for so long because mm-hmm. that's disrespectful. But they're looking at you, talking to you, though. Yeah, right? they can because they're older people. <laughs> Let's not get to that. That's a whole different topic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going into this too much. Yeah, I can say a whole lot about that one. It's just, yeah, it's just is what it is. But like having to like relearn that coming to America was so different because everybody was looking at each other in the eyes. Yeah. You go through this interview, like, they're looking at you straight you couldn't, in the eye. You couldn't cross your arms yeah. Yeah. because they would say, oh, then you're, you're, being, you're being Yeah, or you're mad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was like, why can't you just come across my arms? Yeah. <laughs> I'm That's focused. my comfort zone. <laughs> That's funny. That's so funny. So anyway, <clears throat> we've now understand that uh, communication is a skill. I mean, it's something we're born with, but we we can improve the way we communicate. We can we can improve skills, how to be better communicators. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and so, you know, and every it's I think this is this is like a long like like she said it's a process. You're just gonna be doing probably for the rest of your life. You mm-hmm. can't just say I'm a good communicator. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could you could be good at it, but you're not like there yet. You know? Yeah, because there's yeah. and different people that you meet communicate differently, so you have yeah. to kind of adjust yourself mm-hmm. and how they communicate so they can better understand you. Yeah, yeah. But then there's some people that just when they talk, you just fail it. Like you know, these guys are really good communicators, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, and then can I get to that point too? Mm-hmm. <laughs> can I be as good as that guy? Yeah. As him or her? Oh no. Mm-hmm. All right. So thank you so much for listening, and I hope this helped uh, uh, somebody out there uh, who is struggling with communication and trying to improve their communication skills, try to grow as a person, because communication is vital for our survival as humans. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to communicate w- with people 
no matter where you are, right? <laughs> Even yeah. in your own home. You could try to run away from it, but you're st- it's still going to find you. No, I can. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to call your doctor and talk to somebody. Talk to the doctors? Yeah, you're going to have to call to your... We talk to doctors? You can't just like, you'll be, be on, on apps 24-7. <laughs> they have telemedicine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just about to say. Yeah. Sometimes so it's just... Well sometimes you have to explain what's going on with you. In your own words, right? Mm-hmm. You can't just like send the text messages. But you have to explain it to people that want to we'll understand. understand it. Exactly. Yeah. It depends yeah. on who you're trying to communicate with. So, so it's it's important. We have yeah. to be able to communicate either way. Mm-hmm. So, thank you so much. Please, uh, if you listen to this podcast, uh, give us your opinion about communication. What what have you learned about it, and what have you improved about it? We would like to hear your opinion. Let us know. Yes. And subscribe. Uh, and you can find this this podcast streaming platforms. everywhere. Where you find your podcast. Mm-hmm. They're over there. And thank you so much for listening to Mutunuwatu. Thank you. And we will catch you next week. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Mutunuwatu Podcast. We hope you enjoyed listening to our show. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that notification button so you get notified when you upload a new episode. You can also listen to all our episodes at mtuniwatu.com or your favorite podcast app. Follow us also on Facebook and Instagram. And thank you very much.